Hello, dear students. How are you? Hopefully, all of you are in a very good mental and physical condition, aren't you? So today's topic of discussion is pericyclic reactions. This pericyclic reactions, as you know, friends, this is very important topic for B.Sc. students, M.Sc. students. Even it is very important for the GATE and the NEET aspirants. Those students who are appearing for NET examination, there are very important questions come from this chapter. So let us start. So the following things we will study about pericyclic reactions. Let us see the contents which we will study. The first thing which we will study is what are pericyclic reactions, what are its characteristics, and the third is types of pericyclic reactions. So let us start with the first topic that is what are pericyclic reactions. As the name suggests, peri means something which is around, cyclic means this a circular path or a cyclic reaction. So let us define pericyclic reaction. What is it pericyclic reaction is all about? So we say that pericyclic reactions are the type of organic reactions wherein the transition state of the molecule has a cyclic geometry and the reaction progresses in the concerted fashion. Let us see the second thing which is characteristics of pericyclic reactions. A characteristic pericyclic reactions has the following features. First is it has a concerted mechanism as I have told you earlier that concerted means the breaking and the making of bond takes place simultaneously. The second is a cyclic reaction has a, tri has a transition state which is cyclic in nature. Third is it is a stereospecific in nature. It has a stereospecific nature. Stereospecific nature means if it is dextro, if the reactant has a dextro kind of rotation, then the product will have a certain, that is dextro or levo variety, that is stereo nature of the reactant will definitely affect the product as well. The fourth one is, it only undergoes addition and or rearrangement reaction. That is, pericyclic reactions are only reactions in which only addition and rearrangement reaction takes place, nothing of other kind. So let us see the fifth point of a pericyclic reaction. So we are studying the characteristics of pericyclic reactions. A pericyclic reaction has a reversible nature that is the reactant can be converted into product and the product can be converted back to its reactant. Sixth one is it has no intermediate formation. Unlike other methods, unlike other reactions, intermediate formation is not possible. Seventh point is there is no requirement of any catalyst or reagent except in diels alder reaction which we will study in the future parts in the future uh, lectures. In diels alder reactions which is speed up by using Lewis basis which we will study in the future lectures. So these are the few characteristics or other seven characteristics of pericyclic reactions. All those are very important for your examinations. Let us see the third topic, which is the types of pericyclic reactions. The first type of pericyclic reaction is cycloaddition. Remember, my dear students, all the reactions will be of cyclo type. Okay, first one is cycloaddition reaction, second is electrocyclic reaction, third one is 
sigma tropic reaction fourth one is in or loop transfer reaction and the final one that is fifth one is cello tropic reactions these reactions we will study one by one so let us start friends the first which we will study is cyclo addition reaction let us see what is cyclo addition reaction is all about here we will study in pen and paper so let us start with the first reaction which is called cyclo addition reaction as we have mentioned a cyclo addition reaction is a chemical reaction in which two or more unsaturated molecules unsaturated molecules means compounds having at least one double or triple bond combined with the formation of a cyclic adduct adduct you know adduct means addition product in which there is a net reduction of bond multiplicity now the question comes over here is what is bond multiplicity although it will take a long lecture we don't have so much of time we are in a time crisis therefore we will simply say the formation of new bonds will reduce the bond multiplicity and uh, about bond multiplicity we say that as soon as the bond length increases the bond multiplicity decreases let us take let us understand this cyclo addition reaction by taking some examples we have taken two examples the first example is 2 plus 2 cyclo addition here we are adding two molecules of ethene to give cyclobutane. The formation of this reaction takes place with a transition state as you can clearly see in the diagram. There is a formation of a cyclic transition state. That is why it is called cycloaddition reaction. Here addition reaction is taking place and the intermediate uh, rather the transition state the transition state is a cyclic one let us take another example which is called 4 plus 2 cyclo addition here we have taken 1 3 butadiene and we have taken ethene these two will combine together in presence of heat to give cyclohexene cyclohexene molecule will be formed and a cyclic transition state will be formed during this reaction. This reaction takes place in presence of heat whereas the previous reaction takes place in presence of light. Why this is so we have to understand in the next lecture we will discuss about the mechanism or rather the Woodward Hoffman selection rule also known as frontier molecular orbital rule let us take the second type of pericyclic reaction which is known as electrocyclic reaction or electrocyclic rearrangement reaction now let us understand what is the definition of this electrocyclic reaction which reaction or rather which pericyclic reaction is considered as an electrocyclic reaction so the definition is an electrocyclic reaction is an intramolecular rearrangement reaction. Here we have to be careful that the reaction is intramolecular. That is only one molecule is sufficient enough to perform this reaction. So in which one pi bond is converted into one sigma bond. Let us understand this by taking an example uh, in the first example we have taken 1,3-butadiene and this compound is getting converted to cyclobutene so in the reactant we can clearly see there are two double bonds and out of those two double bonds one double bond is getting converted to a sigma bond and the other pi bond shifts its position. Now let us take the second example. The B example, it has, we can clearly see that there are three double bonds and the three double bonds 
get converted into two double bonds. The initial compound was not a cyclic one, but uh, the product is a cyclic one. Why this is so? Because one of the pi bonds has get converted to a sigma bond. It is forming a sigma bond. Here you have seen that we have written H nu con and heat dis. Now what is this con and dis rotation is? This about this we will study in the next lecture which we will upload very soon. So let us start with the third reaction, third type of pericyclic reaction which is a very famous one, sigma tropic reaction. The name suggests that there is a shifting of a sigma bond. So let us see the definition of it. A sigma tropic reaction is an intermolecular, rather intramolecular pericyclic rearrangement reaction in which one sigma bond is changed into another sigma bond. Here we need to be very careful. One sigma bond is changed into another sigma bond. Let us take an example of it. Let us take the Cope rearrangement, a very famous reaction, Cope rearrangement, Claisian rearrangement. So you can clearly see that in the first carbon there is a single bond and the wrong bond and the in the compound the bond is there but in the product there is no bond the bond has been shifted from one place to another that is position number 3 to position number 3 that is why it's called 3 3 rearrangement let us take another example of 1 5 rearrangement you can clearly view in the picture that the hydrogen from carbon number 1 has shifted to carbon number 5. Let us take the fourth example or other fourth type of pericyclic reaction which is called in or group transfer reaction. So let us see what is it all about. A pericyclic reaction in which one or two groups, mind you, one or two groups of atoms is transferred from one molecule to another. In other words, the reaction between an alkene bearing an allylic hydrogen. This is the condition, this is a very prime condition that the compound must have at least an allylic hydrogen. And an electron deficient pi system. This could be an alkene, alkyne or any carbonyl group. Let us understand this in reaction by taking an example. You can clearly see that the hydrogen was initially in another, carb, another compound, another I mean in one of the reactant but it has after the reaction it has shifted to another position and uh, there is a cyclization also taking place so it is a kind of cyclization reaction but there is a change in the position of hydrogen as well this reaction takes place under thermal condition let us see the second example second example also the hydrogen has shifted from one of the reactant to another one and during this process, the cyclization has also occurred. Let us take the final reaction, which is chelotropic reaction. It's a very funny name, chelotropic reaction. So let's see what is it all about. A type of pericyclic reaction in which addition of sulfur dioxide or a carbene or a nitrine takes place in a conjugated pi system to form a cyclic compound. So let us understand this by taking example. The first example is 1,3-butadiene. This 1,3-butadiene combines with sulfur dioxide 
to give a heterocyclic compound. Here, there are two double bonds in 1,3-butadiene which is combining with the lone pairs present in sulfur dioxide to give this heterocyclic compound. Now let us take the second example. The second example means the example number B. Here we have taken a carbene. This carbene, dimethyl carbene or dialkyl carbene, which combines with 1,3-butadiene to give a cyclic compound. So the only difference between a cycloaddition reaction and chelotropic reaction is in cycloaddition reaction both the compounds or rather reactants are hydrocarbons but in chelotropic reaction one of the compound one of the reactant is electron deficient. Please subscribe my channel to get the latest videos and don't forget to like my channel. Thank you.